Hi everyone, welcome to Irfan CFPS YouTube channel. In today's class, we shall go through hydraulic calculations by using area density method. Based on this method, we would be able to calculate total water demand and total volume of water needed as per NFPA 13 requirements. Let's go through hydraulic calculation method. What does it mean? It means this method consists of calculating the specific minimum water flow and pressure demands required to deliver a sprinkler system with a specific density over a specific design area. Water demand is determined by using one of the three methods which is shown on your screen. Number one, density area method number two greatest demand room method or it can be called as room design method and number three special design areas or special design approaches so in today's class we shall discuss about the first method which is density area method based on this we will try to calculate the water demand by using density area curves in this slide we shall go through the basic steps which are mandatory in order to calculate the water demand and also to determine the total volume of water based on density area method or density area curves as you can see on your screen initially we will determine the occupancy hazard classification based on the application of the building or structure and in step 2 we will determine the area and density by looking at density area curves. In step 3, we shall calculate the total volume of water needed. In step 4, we will determine the hose allowance requirements based on NFPA 13. In step 5, upon having all these details like hose allowance and total volume of water, we will calculate the total water demand and in step 6 we shall determine the total volume of water needed let us start step 1 we need to determine the occupancy hazard classification there are three types of occupancy hazard classifications as we already discussed in our earlier classes there are light hazard ordinary hazard group 1 ordinary hazard group 2 extra hazard group 1 and extra hazard group 2 initially based on the application of the building or structure we need to identify the occupancy hazard classification for example if you are considering an office building then it comes under light hazard as per nfpa 13 in step 2 we need to calculate area and density based on density area curves as you can see on your screen area of sprinkler operation in square feet is on y-axis and on x-axis you have density gpm per square feet in case our application is light hazard then the density will be 0.1 and the area of sprinkler operation will be 1500 square feet for example the application which we are considering it comes under ordinary hazard group 1 then the density will be 0.15 gpm per square feet at 1500 square feet area of sprinkler operation for ordinary hazard group 2 also the area of sprinkler operation shall be 1500 square feet at 0.2 gpm per square feet density however for extra hazard group 1 and extra hazard group 2 the area of sprinkler operation shall be 2500 square feet at 0.3 gpm per square feet density for extra hazard group 1 and for group 2 extra hazard the density shall be 0.4 gpm per square feet at 2500 square feet area of sprinkler operation so for example in this case we shall consider our 
occupancy comes under ordinary hazard group 1 it means the density shall be 0 0.15 gpm per square feet at 1500 square feet area of sprinkler operation so in step 3 we shall determine the total minimum volume of water required as per area density curves as we already said that our occupancy comes under ordinary hazard group 1 then the density shall be 0 0.15 and area of sprinkler operation shall be 1500 square feet so based on this density area curve we shall try to calculate the minimum volume of water required so the formula shall be area into density we shall get the minimum sprinkler system supply flow demand so sprinkler demand can be calculated or minimum volume of water required can be calculated by multiplying the area with the density so just i am writing here sprinkler demand demand okay so in this case since we consider ordinary hazard group 1 then our area will be 1500 square feet 1500 square feet multiply by we have density 0 0.15 so if you multiply these two we will get the gpm that is sprinkler demand so this gpm will be about 2 2 and 5 the actual hydraulic calculations for any criteria will always result in higher flows than the minimum flow calculated by using area density curve since or due to the impact of friction loss and balancing so in step 4 we shall able to determine the host stream allowance as per NFPA 13 till now we have identified the occupancy hazard classification and based on that we have identified the area and density as per area density curve and in step 3 we have calculated the sprinkler demand or total water demand required based on the area density curve so in step 4 we need to identify or determine the host stream allowance since the total water demand will be nothing but the combination of both sprinkler demand and host stream allowance so as we considered our application as ordinary hazard so the total combined inside and outside hose allowance we need to consider which is in gpm it is about 250 gpm so the host stream allowance needed for each occupancy hazard is listed under the heading total combined inside and outside hose so in this case our host stream allowance shall be 250 gpm let us see step 5 step 5 is used to determine total water demand which means sprinkler demand plus hose allowance we shall be able to get total water demand so this is the area density curve we already calculated in step 3 the sprinkler demand that is about 225 gpm by considering ordinary hazard group 1 and we are adding our 225 gpm to the hose allowance that also we already discussed in step 4 that we need to consider 250 gpm for hose allowance so now the total water demand total water demand shall be sprinkler demand as per step 3 we got 
225 GPM. Since the units are in gallons per minute, we need to consider the hose allowance in gallons per minute. That is 250 GPM. So the total water demand shall be 475 GPM. We have calculated the total water demand and in step 6 we shall identify or determine the total volume of water required. In this slide we shall go through step 6 which is the last step. Here we shall determine total volume of water needed. Total volume of water needed is equal to water demand multiply by duration. So from table 19.3.3.1.2 host stream allowance and water supply duration requirements for hydraulically calculated systems we can get the duration. So for ordinary hazard the duration shall be 60 to 90 minutes as we already said that the total volume of water required or needed is equal to water demand multiply by duration so water demand we already calculated in our previous step which is nothing but sprinkler demand plus hose allowance we got 475 GPM so here we will multiply with duration if we consider 60 minute duration then it will comes around 28,500 gallons so if we consider 90 GPM then 475 multiply by 90 it shall be about 42,750 gallons the water supply must provide the total volume over the time duration required all those six steps which we have discussed in our previous slides refer to the wet sprinkler systems the area and density for wet sprinkler systems can be calculated by using area density curves but if we have quick response sprinklers there is some adjustment in the area and also if we are going to use dry systems sloped ceilings and high temperature sprinklers then there is a slight adjustment in the area to be done based on NFPA 13 we shall discuss about the area adjustment in our next slides so for quick response sprinklers the area reduction shall be based on this graph on left hand side you have percentage reduction to design area this represents 10% 20% 30% 40% and the ceiling height is on x axis 10 feet 20 feet 30 feet so if the ceiling height is greater than or equal to 10 feet and less than or equal to 20 feet by using this formula we can consider the percentage reduction to the design area for example a reduction of 25 percent means we need to multiply the original remote area size we chose from the density area curves by 75 percent so we have considered 1500 square feet if this is an ordinary hazard so if we go ahead with quick response sprinklers then if the area reduction percentage is 25 percent then we need to remove this 25 percent from this 1500 square feet so it shall be about 1125 square feet so this area shall be multiplied with the density for ordinary hazard 
the density was 0.15 gpm per square feet so here we will get the area into density that is nothing but gallons per minute for dry systems we need to increase the area by 30 percent without adjusting the density for sloped ceilings it is similar to the dry system we need to consider the area that is increase area by 30 percent without adjusting the density for sloped ceilings we can use spray sprinklers or cmsa sprinklers if you are using high temperature sprinklers for extra hazard occupancies then we need to deduct 25 percent from the area without adjusting the density i hope you understand our today's class in which by using area density curves we have determined the total water demand and total volume of water required so in our next class we shall discuss the hydraulic calculations procedure for sprinkler system in very much great detail by considering a small example thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel irfan cfps and make sure to hit the subscription button below and click on the notification icon to learn more about fire protection systems